If you want to reach a high level of Rocket League, there is one simple truth you need to understand. Your mind needs to be locked in at all times to make sure you're making the best decisions. If you find yourself in situations where you're not thinking as clearly as you need to, you are going to be finding yourself having a very, very rough time. And in today's video, we'll be showcasing exactly what happens when your brain is turned off, as the result is basically playing like an absolute moron. So the game we'll be taking a look at today is from a recent competitive 3v3 match that my team played, during which I was actually sick. And while that might not really be an excuse for poor play, it does explain why my brain might not have been functioning to as high a level as it needs to. But we're gonna go ahead and roll this game forward, and we'll just kinda talk through some things that we see in terms of absolute stupidity around the field. So starting off, Flipping on back and right out the gate here, you're going to see that we're just going to absolutely jump up and boom this ball away as hard as absolutely humanly possible. And you may also notice that there's a bunch of space right in front of us with only one player able to challenge. So right out the gate, we are just absolutely booming away possession of this ball, feeling a lot of pressure in this position where we absolutely do not need to. Therefore, putting our team on the back foot immediately by simply giving the ball away to our opponents. So very bad decision making right out the gate here, and we don't even get an overly good touch. Luckily, we do get back on it. We can apply pressure here, just calmly waiting. That's not too bad. Go for some bumps here as well. Can't complain to that idea. Couldn't really do a whole lot more in that play. But now here's mistake number two. So where the heck are we going here? So we go to the backboard. That's all well and good. Waiting to see what happens now. You may notice we have one teammate ahead of us right here, which means our other teammate is back behind us somewhere. Now, imagine if this were a 2v2 game, there is really no way you'd be jumping for this because this ball and this player where they are, it's not exactly dangerous. Like what exactly are they gonna do here that's gonna cause a whole lot of problems for us in this position? As of right now, we have ourselves between the ball and the goal, which is exactly where we need to be if we want to cut off whatever play this guy is going for. But instead of just maintaining this solid positioning and putting our team in a good spot to be successful defensively, we jump out like this for whatever freaking reason and completely fly out of the play. So what you might be seeing early on here is just a lot of unnecessary panic where we're flying and jumping at balls and hitting balls in ways that are not beneficial for our team and are very indicative of the fact that we are just feeling a lot of pressure for no real reason as there is actually no pressure being put onto us. Patience here as well, ball pop popping out and again, another bit of panic here in terms of our takeoff angle. You can see this ball bounces to the right and you can see as we're moving out of net here, we're actually angling our car over to the left, which means we're gonna need to make up the distance that's gonna exist when we actually jump because we're not gonna be pointed at where the ball is going while we're still on the ground before we take off. But again, this is just completely panic play where we really don't need to be panicked because if we look around at where the opponents are, he can't play the ball, he can't play the ball. This is gonna be the guy that's gonna be up on this challenge, but he's currently facing over to the side. So he does need to make a turn in here before he can actually jump for it. But instead of recognizing that we have a bit of time to be a little calmer here, we just absolutely full send in a very stupid direction, and it ends up almost costing our team a very bad goal. Just absolutely flying past the ball for no reason. Luckily, teammate once again does get the clear. Gonna pick up some pads here. Work our way on back now. Ball coming to us. See what we do here. Here's some nice control. This is what we like to see. So you can see there, we're identifying the amount of space that we have and we actually do make use of it. And then we're gonna follow it up with another absolutely idiotic panic play. Cause we land, we see the ball coming across and for whatever reason, even though we currently cannot see our other teammate here who's probably off the screen somewhere over here, rather than just taking the smart play and getting ourselves out of here so that we're not over committing, we try to get a really weird touch back into the net which sure might be a good idea as long as we communicate it. But if you can see here, our other teammate comes absolutely flying into the play. So clearly we did not do a good enough job of communicating our intentions there. And not only that, but in trying to make this really questionable touch, we actually just end up helping the opponent clear the ball back towards our own goal. 
So very shoddy offensive performance there from us. Luckily, teammate does a great job of getting back and we can go ahead and get back on the ball. And then I have no idea what's going on here. So we get the boost. We have an opportunity to get a possible clear, maybe even control out down the sidewall. But instead, we try to go for this like weird fake thing, which isn't necessarily the worst idea, but you can see that it's very obvious what we're going for immediately when we jump. And all that then does is let this guy know that, hey, we're not touching the ball, so feel free to come forward and challenge this as it just falls to the ground harmlessly, because clearly we're not doing anything with it. And this is kind of a thing you want to avoid because you don't want to be obvious in what you're doing to your opponent. The second you telegraph exactly what you're going for, the faster your opponent is able to attack the ball and take it off you. So we'd like to have stayed a little bit closer to this ball, probably just floated directly behind it, rather than leaving this much space, because then we're also going to land very poorly on the side of the ball, just tap it towards the wall, and the opponent is going to have a free challenge win there. Again, we're not doing our team any favors in how we're helping us break out of defense. So overall, very shoddy performance this entire time so far. Free touch here and... Again, the stupidity of these plays is absolutely miraculous, honestly, that we can be this consistently dumb at this high of a rank. So you can see that we can already tell our opponent is right here. He's coming back. He's got speed. He's going to get here. This ball is not going to be able to be launched on target fast enough to be a threat to him. But instead of just like trying to catch this, maybe letting our teammate run forward and go for the demo, and at least giving ourselves at the bare minimum a 1v1 opportunity, even if our teammate doesn't go for that, we instead decide just to boom this ball forward. And again, when you boom the ball forward, when there's an opponent perfectly positioned to take it over, all you're doing is giving possession of the ball back to your opponents for absolutely no reason. So beautiful idea from us, honestly. Fantastic strategy. Just boom the ball away. Who really wants possession of it anyway? So cannot complain. Where the heck are we going here? Okay, let's talk about this one, shall we? So we rotate back all well and good. We get some boost to play with. Nice. We're waiting for this shot to come in. This guy's going to the backboard. What in the world are we worried about here? There ain't no chance that he's scoring from this angle. And again, if we look out across the field, like, yeah, maybe we should be a little bit worried about this guy. But he is waiting to see what this guy's going to do with the ball as well. And we can keep an eye on him as we're watching this. But we don't need to jump at this because all we're doing is taking ourselves completely out of the play for a ball that's not dangerous in the slightest. So clearly the big issue here is that we need to just be worried about what ball is actually dangerous and making sure that we attack it appropriately rather than just jumping at absolutely everything we see floating near our net which is very bad in terms of our usage of our brain because clearly we're not actually thinking through the risk slash reward in what we're actually going for. We're just jumping because we see the ball near our net and it's going to result in us just being miles out of the play for no reason because as you can see, this guy just doubles this ball all the way back over to the opposite corner. And why did we need to use boost to get into the air? Why are our wheels off the ground? Like, it's just sloppy play overall because now we need to recover back. Granted, it's still not a dangerous ball because he pinched it all the way over there, but totally unnecessary from us to put ourselves in that position. Waiting patiently like this ball in the air. Again, this is another just very loose touch for no reason. Again, if we're looking at the position we're in, why are we jumping so early here? This guy is floating back to the ground. This guy's on the backboard. This guy's in the net. Who is challenging this ball that we need to jump right this second? absolutely nobody nobody on this orange team is about to jump for this ball so we could take just a little bit more time and actually set ourselves up for a solid angle to maintain control of the ball rather than again just hitting it directly off the sidewall where the opponents can take over for free once they recover out of this position so we are really making poor decisions on the ball constantly in the touches we go for because this literally is like handing the ball directly over to our opponents and then even worse we recognize our mistake after the fact we retry we try to recover back to it and then we throw ourselves out of the play once again and burn like 35 more boosts to do so so now we're even further out of the play for absolutely no reason and we need to try to scramble back to help our team out which luckily we are able to do and we do get ourselves back in a spot where we can make the save so good rotation there good awareness of what was happening but the good plays are certainly very few and far between in comparison to the very, very bad ones. 
Ball coming back across. What on earth is this? We do get the block. I don't like the idea of just sitting it like this in front of the net, though. We're not actually doing anything here. We're making this save even harder for ourselves because I do believe we have a teammate like right behind us, and we do. So we literally could just drive up this wall here and be in a much better defensive position where we have one player defending backboard, one player on the goal line, and a third player rotating back kind of covering the midfield area instead of having two players kind of defending the same spot, which is what we got right here. So need to be careful of this. This is, again, very poor positioning, very poor planning for what is actually going on. And luckily, we are able to get up to this, but if we had just been on the backboard, we probably would have control of this ball and would be able to just carry it on out rather than be having to stretch to get back to it like this. And now again, we're still just under pressure because we haven't been able to get control of the ball to get a successful clear. And then even worse, because of that, this kind of all stems because we didn't put ourselves in a spot to get control of the ball. We are unable to do anything with this, when this ball comes back across. So we're kind of trying to chill. The ball gets over our teammate just barely. And then we have to try to jump up to make a save, but CCP does a very good job of recognizing where the threat is on this incoming shot, takes it out of the play, and that kind of all goes back to the fact that we didn't position ourselves well on the backboard to get a clear out. If we position ourselves well at the start of that kind of onslaught, we probably give ourselves a fairly good chance of breaking out without any issue at all, but instead we position poorly, we can't get control of the ball on our touch, and just like that, it's over our heads back to our opponent's control, and it's just all kind of a mess. This play, again, just very awkward. We're waiting patiently. We don't rush this. We just wait for him to hit it over us, which is, again, very weird. Like, we're not actually pressuring much here, and then we go up and try to get a touch, and we just end up blocking it over the top of our teammate who's watching us, wondering what the heck we're doing. Waiting patiently, like this. Recognize the space, pop the ball up. Not a bad idea. We get beat to it, but at least it's some form of control when we recognize that we actually have space to work with. So I'd much rather see us get blocked immediately from attempting to take control rather than just booming the ball away constantly. Another good challenge right here. We get back to it as well and we get it around another player. A little bit better usage of our brain here now that we're kind of ticking down in this game. Again, good cut there to take that ball out of the mid. It seems that now that we recognize we're losing and like we really don't have anything to worry about, we're playing a lot more free and a lot smarter. So for whatever reason, we just need to do this when the game's tied because through the up until they scored that first goal, we played like an absolute idiot pretty much the entire time. Pop up here, get it past one, land smoothly on the wall, pressure through the corner. That's not bad at all. We keep our wheels on the ground as well so we can rotate back quickly. Could do more with grabbing boost here on our way back. We're all the way back with pretty much zero for no reason when there was a ton of pads that we could have gotten. But we're going to go ahead and get a clear. Again, could have possibly taken control there, but that one's a little bit more understandable. Ball past our teammate. We're going to recognize, though, that we're first to this so we can go ahead and get that block. Again, here's another not so smart play, though. So we get the pop up. We check where the opponents are, and for whatever reason, we just sit under this ball. Like, we don't try to boost up the wall. We don't try to jump for it. I think we're just very unconfident with how this is bouncing, but because of that, we are just absolutely toasted to this ball, and we get demoed because of it. Now, yes, I think we do actually tap it over him, but we could have had a much better play there if we had actually been confident in our ability to attack the ball quickly. Like right here, here's much better, yes. So we're going to boom the ball away once again, which again isn't ideal, obviously, but at least here we attack the ball quickly, we read where it's going, and we get ourselves a touch on the ball rather than inviting in a challenge that we don't need to. So not the best play, perhaps. Could have taken control there, but at least it is something in terms of getting a touch on the ball. Now this, I really like. This is great, honestly. This is probably the best play we are going to make this entire game. And let's just watch this entire sequence. So yeah, granted, loose touch. We burn a lot of boost really for no reason, which... Again, not great, but from this point on, we're going to be pretty smart. So we could have gone to take small pads right away. We compete for a corner boost that's not here. Not the end of the world. We can go ahead and rotate out. Get a couple pads on our way. Again, mid boost isn't there, but you'll notice we're keeping up the supersonic speed here, which is going to allow us to make this turn and pressure forward. And because of the nice play from our teammate, the ball is going to drop into a pretty awkward spot. 
which allows us to go ahead and jump right on it. And because we did such a good job maintaining our speed, we're able to attack the ball as quickly as possible, even though we don't exactly have a ton of boost to work with. And the placement on the shot is just as good to put ourselves back in a tie game. So finally, we do something smart. Teammate turning, we're still waiting patiently. Ball to us, see what we do. Got a good challenge, that wasn't too bad, but now here's where everything's gonna fall apart. So we rotate all the way back. Not the end of the world. Both teammates get beat. So right here, you're looking at this and it's like, oh boy, this is not the best opportunity because we got three players all pretty much ready to come attack our net and both of my teammates are in my opponent's half. So the question here is you pretty much have two options. You can either try to dive quick and hope to win the ball, but if you get beat, it's in your net for free and the game's pretty much over. Or you can try to buy as much time as possible, try to read what they're going for, and just do what you can to delay time until your teammates can get back. So right here, I think the best idea would be to just take our chances and turn back because it is very obvious that this guy is way closer to the ball than us. So if we try to dive for this, we are very likely just going to have the ball beat around us, and that's pretty much gonna be the game solidified. But of course, we wouldn't be talking about this if we did the smart thing, because instead of taking that time and waiting patiently, we just dive on forward. And because of that, you can see we are very easily beat. And now absolutely no time is bought for our team to get back. And it is just a wide open net that eventually they will go ahead and solidify. And that is all because we made a horrible decision in that split second opportunity we had to either go or stay back. Obviously staying back would have been much smarter but clearly we were not using our brains. Once again, jumping out of the way of the ball because we're not positioned for how it's bouncing. Five seconds left, need one more opportunity maybe, but we're missing every single pad in the midfield. Pressure forward, we gotta block, this ball pops over us and that is the game just like that. So as you can see, just constantly bad touches, bad decisions, bad positioning. Just overall, a very dumb game from us throughout that one. Overall, we barely did anything smart at all. I think I can count like two or three situations where we did something smart on the ball. Other than that, pretty much every attempt that we had was just a complete giveaway of possession for really absolutely no reason. And realistically, every single one of our decisions was surrounded by panic. So what exactly does this tell us? Are we just an idiot who doesn't know how to play the game? Should we just absolutely give up on trying to play smartly? Well, absolutely not. It just means that we need to do a better job of recognizing when our brain is not functioning to as high a level as we would like. It is extremely important to be able to identify this fact as quickly as possible so that you can give yourself time to take a breath, reset, and then really get your brain focusing on at least one thing in particular around the field. I've said this before, but if you can get your brain to focus on one specific thing, oftentimes what happens is that most areas of Rocket League are interconnected. If you focus on your rotation, then your positioning will often iron itself out as well because you're really focusing on how you're moving around the field. But if you simply refuse to focus on anything and instead just try to plow on through and brute force your way to play smarter, it is simply not going to work and you're going to end up in situations like this. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you who made it to this point in the video, and I do hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be a bit more involved in the community we're building here, feel free to join my Discord, which I'll have linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.